All right, so we're going to start by installing Optimum Lab. Uh, this is a folder containing what we're going to have laid out in Teams. It might look a little different. We might break it out a bit more to make it easier for everyone to get to and to use the proper parts of it. But to start, we're going to install Optimum Lab on this computer. So we're going to go into our setup folder and we're going to run the simple program. Uh, I'm just going to let it default everything, make it pretty easy. I am on a different computer, so I may have to change up a couple things. Um, so with it installed, we'll go ahead and launch Optimum Lap. So this should be exactly the same as how everyone else sees it. It's going to pull up. It's going to want your email address and a license key. Uh, if I recall correctly, this works the same in regard of how many times or how many computers you put it on. Uh, I'm pretty sure I've got the key written down here. So I'm going to go ahead and use mine. Uh, if this expires, OptumLap is free. It's easy enough to set up. Uh, so this shouldn't be a problem at all. I'm just doing this for ease. Uh, there's always a new version, I swear. I'm just going to ignore it for now. I haven't found many differences in them. So when you open it up for the first time, it's going to open up like this. You have a couple options here, right? We can go ahead and open a project. We can create a new one. We can open a template. So I'm going to start basic. We're going to start with a new project. That way we don't have any of the tracks or any of the settings that we're going to be pulling it in. I recommend you start simple and clean so you don't get confused by everything. But eventually, we will all be pulling out of the same project, and we'll have one set up for acceleration, one for skid pad, and one for autocross, and you know, so on as we find specific targets we want to look at. So we'll go ahead and create a new project. I'll call it video test. Uh, I will not put it in LapSim. That way, it stays separate from everything else. And we get a pretty nice screen here. Uh, not too bad, pretty simple. We have under the design tab all the things we can do with our vehicle, and we have all of our things we can do with our track. Uh, I tend to always start with vehicle and then work our way in. Uh, the vehicle we're going to be working with today is not actually the full setup. It's just a dummy one I made. Uh, I put in a couple numbers bloated. That way you can see more drastic change throughout it, but it is pretty similar. So. I'd rather everyone just import and not create a car. That way we don't end up with any uh, inconsistencies. You'll see in the teams, I have the cars labeled with a date. That way, as we update and refine our model, it's easy to tell what is the most current car and make sure we're all on the same page as to what data we're pulling. So we'll go ahead and select import. We're going to go into lapse and folder. Keep in mind, this would all be on teams. This wouldn't just be out and about and we'll go in let me see if i've got the old five in here so i do so i'm gonna grab it i mean you can already see here i i let it build up and get confusing this won't happen in the set that you guys have um we'll go ahead and open up our vehicle so we'll see in here we'll have a vehicle populate we can double click it we get shown some of the generic data that goes into it we have type weight you know what wheel drive it is. We've got some aero data that helps us know how drag's affecting us. We've got our tire data. You know, I mean, you can see some of the inflated numbers in here, and I only put in a, a couple things for our engine graph, and clearly it's skewed. Um, once again, just just for our example here. Um, this is you know you need to check this each time before you run a sim. Make sure it matches what you had prior or there's something written in the cha change log that indicates why a change was made to this because uh, it is going to have a, a rather drastic impact on how our point mass sim looks. Uh, so now that we have a vehicle, I'm going to close it so we don't have too much at once. We're going to bring in a track. I'm going to show you in a separate video how to create a track. For now, we're just going to bring one in and do a simple sim. So we can browse online for it, but I should already have a track downloaded. So we'll go to import. We'll go into the same same place as the rest. We have tracks. Uh, we'll go ahead and pull in an endurance track. That way you guys can see a bit more change. Uh, skid pad and then test trip is Excel. I'll rename those and get those in nice. Those aren't as telling in a point mass sim. Um, oh, didn't work. That was brilliant. Uh, we'll try Michigan. 
Okay, that one worked. And uh, I guess we'll have to go through and check all our tracks. So we have a vehicle, we have our track. Next up is results and then analysis, which we've got, we've got nothing in yet. So we're going to start by running a basic sim. So we're done with the design tab. We're into the simulation tab. We'll show batch run in a different sim, uh, different video. So we'll start with just simulate. It's going to have us select our car, select our track, given that we only have one. Pretty easy. And so now it's run that simulation. We have our results. So we can look at our results in a, in a large array of options. If we want to see our speed throughout the track, we can pull that up. And you can see here, you know, wh whatever data you're going for. Say I was looking for, is the car topping out in the straights? Well, I see flat tops here. So yes, clearly we are topping out. Uh, we can also see this in reference to an actual track. So we can pull in a track map and we can look at just speed on it. We'll click OK. And you can see this is what our endurance course looks like. And we have a chart over here telling us, you know, where our speed is throughout the track. Uh, I don't want to get into interpreting data in this video. I just want to simply show you how to run these sims. So we'll go ahead and go through from the beginning with the setup. Well, actually, it's it's only the one chart, so there's not that much in this. Uh, this may be where we where we end it, but. Let's spend some time going through the data some more. So the first option we have is table. It's going to tell us some of these over under values, right? How much we were at max throttle, how much we were coasting, you know, our overall time. This is kind of that data that lets you check your sim each time. So we'll, we'll jump around a bit here. So we've shown table. Let's show export results. So we can go ahead and pop these results out into a Excel file. Um, and let me grab that and let me open it. I have actually didn't pay attention to where it saved it, so let me check real quick. Okay, so put it in documents. So we'll go ahead and real quick go in documents. We'll open it. So a lot of what we use point mass for, we end up sticking it in in an Excel file. Uh, this is difficult to look at, right? The the built-in software has really great ways of showing you data. You're going to have to do it yourself if you bring it in here, but it gives you a lot more freedom. So that table I, I showed you all just a second ago is always listed here. And it's such a great thing because it always has your vehicle parameters. So every time we make one of these sims that we want to use for our data, you need to save this full Excel. This right here is what's going to let us check, you know, hey, did you mess up? Did we change something and we need to go rerun this sim? This data here is what shows us that. And so after that, the simulation will spit out all of these values here and you can you can see the the unit and then what what it corresponds to. And so this really lets us parse out, you know, energy usage, any of the other things we're looking for. Uh, I do need to do a video on what point mass can be used for because there are certain assumptions that are awesome from this and it really lets us narrow in on. And there are certain things that are very much, you know, need a bit more analysis than a point sim to get to a discernible result. But from this video, it should show you how to import a car, import a track. You should know how to run a basic simulation and you should know how to go through here and use the analysis tools. Um, there's there's a ton more you can do with this guy as you get into it, making GG circles. You know, go through this, look at what options you can get out, and see what's valuable to you, what can be used in those different areas, and uh, and how LapSim can can help advance your design.